This is my living room. And this is me watching England against Denmark in the semi-final of Euro 2020. And this is the moment when Harry Kane took that penalty against Denmark in extra time. Yeah. But no one has scored more penalties for England than Harry Kane. Well, Harry. Well, Harry. Good luck. I'm showing you this clip because one, it's quite funny to watch back, but more importantly, because I've been keeping a secret from you guys. And more importantly, from this guy. This guy's my dad. And you guys know, if anyone's been watching the channel for a while, we've had some moments on the channel actually, but of course we've had a million more off it. He is my hero. I love him to bits. And when it comes to football, in terms of playing the game or watching games, He's always, always been there and we've always, always been together. And the reason I'm hugging him first is because I hug him first. That's what we do when we go to QPR or wherever we go. And I know how fortunate I am to have the possibility of doing that. And so the older I get, the more I, um, the more I care about doing that. Like that. Um. So for the Denmark game, I wanted to be in the ground. I wanted to be at the stadium. And if I had had a ticket, I would have been there. If I'd had two tickets, of course, I would have taken my dad. I had no tickets. So all I could do was be with the people that I cared about. And one of those people, of course, was my dad. And so we were able to enjoy that as millions of you were able to up and down the country. But I did go to the England-Germany game. And when I went to that game and when we won that game, First of all, I remember the atmosphere, but secondly, I remember thinking, we've got a chance here. I think I believe in us. And if I believe in us and we're going to make it to the final, what do I do about that? Where will I be and who will I be with? So the secret that I kept from my dad and from you guys was that before the Ukraine game, I went for it. I took a gamble and I bought two tickets to Wembley for the final of Euro 2020 with the hope that England would make it there somehow. And if we got to the first final since 1966, I'd be able to experience it and hopefully watch us win a major tournament with my dad because that just felt really important to me. Obviously, I didn't tell my dad. And when I'm hugging my dad there, I'm probably hugging him a bit harder than he's hugging me because I know how important that goal is and what it means. I didn't tell him then. I didn't tell him at full time. I didn't tell him when he left. Uh, I decided to surprise him. I wanted to surprise him properly and I wanted to just showcase him. So I needed a reason to go and see my dad to break the news to him and to surprise him. And I thought the best way of doing it was to talk to him about 1966. Now, I don't know that many people who were around at that time, but Something that you won't know about my dad, my dad grew up in Wembley. Also, my dad has quite a bittersweet feeling when it comes to 1966 because despite just living around the corner, he had a couple of heartbreaks during that tournament. But I want him to explain that, not me. And so I needed a plan to create that, right? So what I did was this. I called him and I said to him, you were around in 1966. I want to do a video where I talk to someone about the parallels between 1966 and 2021. And he fell for it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, wicked. We'll get our bit done and then we can have a cup of tea with mum. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay. Wicked. All right, great. Look forward to it. All right, then. All right, Dad. I'll see, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, mate. See you in a bit, mum. Bye. Bye. All right. Stage one complete. Stage one complete. I then got in my car, drove down to him, set up for the interview, and then spoke to him about all those memories that he had, and he revealed the bittersweet moments that he had way back in 1966. Hello, Gary. Hello, mate. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm Gary Alcott. I'm James Alcott's dad, and now I am 67. 
I'll be 68 in September, and in 1966, uh, I was 12 and was going to be 13 in that September. So I have strong memories of 66. Any bruises from last night? You haven't had me shake you for a while. No, no, no. <laughs> the bruises normally come from um, hitting your knee on the um, on the, on the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a small world when you're yeah. 12, right? Yeah, that's so right. Yeah. When you're 12, what does your world revolve around? For me, it revolved, it revolved around playing sport, um, playing football. You know, I was in the school football team. Um, so school football team till March. And then I played cricket. I was, in, I was captain of the school cricket team. So that was, that was it. So it's football and cricket. Um, and so at, at that time, I, I just started in, in the October 65 going to Queen's Park Rangers on my own or with, with a mate. And so that was that was so it was it was football and sport yeah, yeah. really all the time. Lazarus, it's a goal! Rangers are in the lead. And Swindon comes out of his goal to join in the celebration. So when it's your world, your world's QPR in England, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 following in because we we lived in Harleston, so we weren't very far from Wembley, probably three or four miles or so. So and and we used to go, we used to be able to go. My dad used to take me, and so see. And I started by going to the England schoolboy games that my dad used to easily get a ticket for, and then we went to international. So so it was like, and you went to, grew up with it, but you went to everything, didn't you? Because you live around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went to. Everything. Yeah, I've seen I've seen rugby league finals there. I've seen the Gaelic games there, Speedway. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, just just cup fight, like all cup the big finals. games as well. Right? Yeah, my, my my dad had a friend who who could get us in um, without tickets. It, it's a you know, special place. Wembley was a special place. So yeah. so when you're so when you're twelve, and you're living around the corner, there's you're very close to it. Yeah, you have some kind of bittersweet memories when it comes to. That tournament as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, Robert. <laughs> it seems like it was like one of my biggest football di- disappointments, and and obviously one of the most positive moments. When under the 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 um, negative bit was not being selected for the opening ceremony. That guy lives in Australia now. Is uh, you know, I, I'm I'm in contact whenever he comes to England. I see him. My school provided some of the boys that were in the opening ceremony. And if you were in the football team, you got um, a chance to be uh, selected, but you had to be between five foot and five foot three. And um, uh, I wasn't. I just remember being called in to be measured and then the shake of the head came. On the opening ceremony, you're the people from your school that were selected, that were tall enough, yeah, yeah. were on the pitch, opening ceremony yeah. at Wembley, um, and mascots for different nations within the opening ceremony. Yeah, so they, they, they came out of the tunnel, walked around the pitch once, and then lined up on the pitch um, to face the Queen as the Queen opened the, um, the, uh, the World Cup Championship. I am very pleased that this country is acting as host for the final phases of the World Cup. I can remember standing there and watching these kids walk past, and um, my school were there you saw them and they were all like that you could um, see the heights of the people and it was straight line and then you saw the other schools and it was up here down here and whatever <laughs> and it was like really so it made it worse in a way that you see if I if I hadn't have been at the game I wouldn't have seen that the heights varied yeah, yeah. you just assumed it was the case I was old enough to work out that the World Cup and like the Olympics don't come round very often mm. and uh, and so you know and, and that was such a massive thing at that time and so to miss out on that was like wow you know yeah. and God, you know when you're young and you have these things you just soak them in don't you yeah yeah I mean I've probably read every word on here I couldn't I mean certainly <laughs> the um, the matches and the, yeah. you know, the match match report and stuff the bizarre thing with the 1966 World Cup was that my parents had arranged for us to go and have first ever summer a holiday abroad for the final um, we went back to the TV lounge, got there not not too early, and it was mobbed. And half of the um, TV lounge was full of English people, and half of the TV lounge was full of German people. So we watched the game in Spain, in the heat, 
Um, so you weren't there? No, I wasn't there. No, the wasn't in the country. Did, at how all. Did, you, did that feel bizarre to you when you'd gone to every game? Well, I hadn't been to every game. I'd but, been, but you'd gone to gone so to many two, games. Two, yeah, yeah, been to a lot of England games. So it's just the, just the way life was. I mean, you know, at 12, you don't determine your life, do you? It was just, you know, you just have to accept it. You just have to, you know, I mean, what am I going to do? Say, I don't want to go. I mean, I'm 12 years old. So um, so it was, it, was, it was like being at the great game. Because the you know the, the tension that was there with the, the um, Ger- German guys and stuff, and um, of course when they equalised, it was like oh my god. So how old is this book? This is from nineteen sixty six. Well, yeah, so it was. I got it on nineteenth July, twenty eighth of July. So how old are you when you've written this? I've written this when I was thirteen. Wow. <laughs> What's this? This is book. This book belongs to Gary Stewart Alcott. From Alden. Wow. I think obviously this tournament has, has had sort of COVID hanging over it, so it's not a normal tournament. And I think it, 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 it's nice to see the big big players in in person, and that's what we were, I was able to do in those days. Is you know I would go to watch um, Spurs to see Jimmy Greaves, let's say, right. and and see those players. But um, so do you think that's a bit of a, a sadness with this tournament? Is that is that you you kind of can see them, but you can't. You can't feel, I feel them. them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the feel thing. Yeah, because we like us together. We go to QPR together, mm. and it's so important. And like this, you know, the the semi final. I need. I I felt like I needed to find a way for you to be there with me, um, because that's what we've done. Mm. So I think that's a really interesting part of it as well. When we've been so starved of going to QPR, yeah, like, yeah. like we've watched it together with yeah. a three second delay. Yeah, it's, and it's shit. Isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it it it's the experience of being there. And I think um, going back to '96 briefly is that because my dad took me to, to the opening game in '66, and he also took me to the game against France in one of the group games. When when Euro '96 was going to happen, I thought, oh. I want to take James. I want James to be able to see this live and in reality. So, two years before the tournament started, I bought tickets for you and me to go, um, and it was for the second England game on on the on the uh, second England game in the group, which amazingly turned out to be Scotland. Yeah. And then, so I had those tickets. So I was well chuffed to have got those tickets, and then. Uh, Two weeks before the game, I ruptured my Achilles tendon and, and couldn't go. So, uh, it, yeah, but we haven't had that, have we? We haven't, we haven't been. I didn't think about that. We haven't been to a major tournament together, really. No, no, no. no. Be, I mean, it's obvious it's different circumstances and, and times of, of your life, isn't it? So that was for me. I thought, well, my, I can remember. My, I've always been grateful for my dad to have done that, so that I could. Say and know that I'd been at I'd been at the '66 um, World Cup, and I wanted that for you with '96, yeah, yeah. and and it turns out to be, you know, the, the, one of the most memorable games of of the competition. And here's Gascoigne, brilliant play! Oh, take a bow. I actually asked the question. Oh, so you weren't there, and it doesn't matter so that it that you weren't there. All that really matters is that it matters. And I thought that was his kind of way out to resolving why he wasn't able to be there. But his answer was actually a bit different to what I expected. I think it does matter where you are in as much as we know from being at Wembley in twenty four May, May the 24th, 2014. You couldn't be anywhere else, could you, really? It wouldn't have been the same yeah. being anywhere else. So I think that that is, is, um, is, is special. And also to be with your, your community... Um, I thought that was the, you know the best the best thing about the playoff final and the two playoff finals we've been to is like it's thirty forty thousand Rangers fans and you think oh they're the same as me mm. we're in this together and that, I thought that that that's special so I think I think yeah obviously the ideal would be to be at the game and and then as I say if you can't be at the game you'd be with the people that you know mean the most to you I think is is the best way to, to enjoy it I still wouldn't know what, what team he will pick um, but yeah I think we'll win cheers bud <laughs> are we good that's what that'll do alright let's go <laughs> he's good isn't he you can see where I get it from no offence man so the interview was over 
We then had a bit of food with my mum. We then sat down for a cup of tea and a biscuit that my dad decided to literally put all over him. It's incredible how messy he was. Fortunately, we dusted those off. And then the moment came where I was able to tell him that we're going to the final. Like, was there a moment when you kind of believed? Did, was there then? In 66? No, this, no, sorry, this time round. This time round, I think... I, I, I think beating beating Germany. I think when we got to when we got to half time against Germany, first ten minutes I thought, oh, I, say, I thought we were gonna win this. Yeah. You know, before the game I thought, oh we we'll win this. And then got to and the first ten minutes they were all over us. Yeah. It's like we never never turned up to start with. And I think it's great that they've they almost like looked round, took a deep breath and said, Come on, you know, and the, the how how that happens, whether it happens from Kane or Maguire or whatever yeah. or it's Southgate whatever. they went yeah we can do this uh, yeah, and yeah. Um, I am um, yeah I, I had a feeling after after Germany I was like mm -hmm. something, something feels different here but I guess um, have you seen this this is on the um, Euro 2020 app What do you have to do? Oh, God. <laughs> so what's it? Two tickets. Oh. Who's that? Ticket check kept for James Alcott. Who's that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I believed after the Germany game, Dad, and I was thinking, if we're going to get there, I want to be there, and I want to be there with you. Oh, wow. So I bought... Two tickets to the final. Oh wow, that's funny. So uh, I don't know if you're free on Sunday. <laughs> I'll have to ask my wife if I can go. I don't know if you're free on Sunday, but that's amazing. It's the biggest game of our lives, yeah, isn't yeah. it? So I was like, before I get a couple yeah, of tickets yeah. for us. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be good. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have to get me a shirt. <laughs> I love, yeah, you can I can't, I can't, can I get into it though? <laughs> I'm sure you can get into it, yeah. So we're going to be behind the goal. Oh, wow. It was, that's why yesterday was scary. Because I was like, I'd gone for it. Because <laughs> I was like, we can't, we got to be there, haven't we? Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, so my comments on there on, on what? When you, when you were asking me questions about, is it, what's the best thing? I said, that bean. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. So <laughs> we're going. That's amazing. Win, lose, yeah, or draw. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. draw. We've got that, fingers crossed we win it. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, both, we'll be there soon. Yeah. Oh, can't be missing two finals. We can't be having that. No, no. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. Someone. <laughs> His little face, yeah. Dad. <laughs> Happy days. Mm. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm so, it's so nice to be able to treat you. You're well jumped on. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. it out. You're fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you to let it yeah, out. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah. You know. Oh, look. <laughs> no, that, that's just, that was clever the way you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Understated as ever, but lovely all the same. And I felt a bit funny filming it, but I'm actually kind of really pleased because I just think it just shows that He's a good guy, isn't he? He's a really good guy. And we're going. We're going to the final. I will be there. You know how passionate I've been about this tournament and, and this team and football in general. The only problem is, what if we lose? What if we lose? After all of this, we lose the final. I could give you an answer to that, but I think this video needs to be finished off with a final word from, uh, from our boy Gary. So uh, I asked him that question before I revealed to him that we had tickets, by the way. And this is what he said. Uh, what do we do if we lose? What do we do if we lose? Um, I, th I think if if we lose, the thing that we don't do is is get rid of Southgate. That's that's a hundred percent. And you, you you have you have to go again. You have to go again. Um, you talk about the pain you've had of um, following England and whatever, but. You know what I can. The things I can remember is 1970, the quarter final of the of the, the World Cup then, and um, I think it was a night before one of my big O levels. We're two new up against Germany in the quarter final. We're the world champions. We're going to win, and then 
They score two goals, take no extra time, and they score a third one. I just couldn't believe that could happen. But you just have to go again. Win or lose to uh, on Sunday, the the players will get an extra experience. So those players will be better. I, th- I think yeah. It's just it's a, it's a jur- it's a journey. It's all a journey, and these are moments that uh, 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 along the way which can take you high or they take you low. And sometimes the lows live with you for a, for a long, long time, you know. Um, and um, and you they hurt and they still hurt, but you, you've got to be there for the highs. What about between now and Sunday? <laughs> now and Sunday. I think well, I think you 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 read it, read everything you can to um, give yourself a better understanding of different players and um, make a plan for Sunday. I guess is the key. Um, but don't plan for Monday. <laughs>